Uh, well, good morning. Thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, I am Representative Kurt Dowd, uh, the House Minority Leader. Um, we're very excited to be starting a new session and uh, to be welcoming uh, eight uh, first-time freshmen and two returning members uh, to our uh, caucus, and, and uh, we think they'll be a great asset uh, to the state of Minnesota and to the House of Representatives, and they, they come from varying backgrounds and bring varying experience, so we're very excited to welcome them aboard today and, and get them sworn in. Um, and we're excited to roll up our sleeves and, and get to work, uh, helping the governor uh, with the response to COVID, uh, helping with the uh, economic, uh, economic recovery, uh, which uh, COVID will require uh, once we get back to normal here. Uh, um, and then also uh, working through our, uh, our state budget. Uh, those are the biggest things that are going to be facing uh, the House of Representatives this year, and we're eager to be uh, part of the solutions and, and roll up our sleeves and help uh, get Minnesota back to work, get Minnesota back open, and, and do that safely. So um, those are our main objectives this session. Um, we want to make sure that we get our kids back in school, uh, that we get our businesses open safely, uh, that we get the vaccine distributed uh, quickly and in an orderly fashion so that we can get uh, things opened up uh, as quickly as possible and get back to normal. So um, with that, uh, also disappointed uh, last night uh, to get word from the House Democrats that they intend to change the rules of the House of Representatives. Um, I think everyone is aware that uh, after the election, they no longer have uh, a majority of members of the House of Representatives who want to continue the governor's emergency powers. Um, our House rules currently do allow uh, the majority in the House of Representatives to uh, exert its will and, and bring up a, a vote on that uh, at any time by, by pulling a bill or resolution from committee. Um, the Democrats have indicated that they have a desire to uh, change the House rules to require a, a three-fifths majority um, to bring a bill from committee uh, or a resolution from committee to the floor. So this is an acknowledgment uh, that leadership in the House uh, does not have the votes to uh, continue uh, to allow the governor to have his emergency powers. Um, it's also an admission on their part that they uh, do not want the legislature to work with the governor, that they want the governor uh, to continue to act uh, solely and alone in his response to COVID, which I think is incredibly disappointing. Um, and I'm very disappointed that a minority in the Minnesota House of Representatives, uh, that they will change the rules to allow a minority of the members of the Minnesota House of Representatives to uh, achieve its uh, goal of preventing the majority from ending the emergency powers. Um, and I'll remind people that the Republicans in the House do not want to end the emergency powers because we uh, don't care about COVID or that we don't want to keep Minnesota safe. We absolutely do. Uh, we know the severity. We, we know that we want to keep Minnesota safe, but we also uh, uh, do want to restore the legislature to its co-equal, its status as a co-equal branch of government, and we want to work with the governor um, in, in the response to COVID and make sure that uh, our constituents can have their voice heard uh, by testifying and, and, and communicating with their members of the House of Representatives. And that's the normal way that our Constitution um, has, uh, has uh, really envisioned that we should work with the executive branch. So we're eager to get back to um, that normal working process, but it looks like um, the leadership of the House uh, under the Democrats intends to continue to block that, um, even though they don't have the votes uh, of a majority of the members of the House of Representatives. So with that, I will open it up for questions, and I'm just going to peek in the chat bar here. Um, uh, Dave Oreck, looks like you have a question. Hey, you're, you're on mute there, Dave. Okay. I guess uh, Representative New is not on the call either right now. Um, I'm not sure. We can certainly get her on if Andrew can do that. Well, it was we'll going to be a, get her on. a question for both of you or, or you right now, Mr. Minority Leader. Real simple. Who won the uh, presidential election of Minnesota and who won the presidential election nationally? Well, <laughs> you know, obviously it appears that uh, Joe Biden won in Minnesota by about seven points, and, and it appears that he has won nationally. Um, I'll, I'll leave that fight about whether there was voter fraud in, in other states to, uh, to others to, to quibble about. We're focused on Minnesotans. We're focused on a response to COVID and making sure that we uh, get the vaccine distributed as quickly as possible and get Minnesota opened up as, as safely as possible and as quickly as possible. Thanks. I have a different question, but I'll go to the back of the line now. Okay. <laughs> Bill Werner. Hi. Yeah, Mr. Leader. Um, Senator um, 
Bach, I, th- I think, has has floated the idea of a bonding bill. I don't know if Democrats have, have bitten yet on that, but I suspect that they will. Um, from your standpoint, uh, what is going to be necessary to move forward with a bonding bill? And I'll, I'll be blunt, since uh, uh, I'm going to be simple-minded on this, um, is that going to be contingent on the governor's COVID emergency powers? You know, I, I, thanks for the question, Bill. I, I think, you know, we understand and, and have always supported uh, the importance of a, a bonding bill and that investment in our infrastructure across the state. Uh, you know, our caucus has long been supportive of that. When I was speaker, we passed uh, some of the largest bonding bills uh, in history, and, and we did pass bills that had the largest ratio of uh, transportation and water infrastructure projects. So we tried to cut out the things that people would consider more wasteful spending and really tried to focus on the things that all Minnesotans thought were uh, really important infrastructure to invest in. Um, and that that tradition has continued forward. Um, we did pass the, the largest bonding bill in state history uh, uh, this year um, and and made uh, large investments. We do face a, a, a large deficit in the next biennium. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how the majority caucuses in both bodies are going to respond, not only to the budget in the current biennium, um, which will directly impact the budget in the tails in the next biennium, uh, but those things are gonna determine uh, what ability we have to invest um, in our uh, capital investment infrastructure across the state. Um, so I, I don't have an answer for you that I think we should. Um, I do support and believe that that infrastructure is important, but uh, we have to see how it fits with all of the other budget priorities that we have this year. Um, I would suspect that this being a uh, uh, not, not a traditional bonding year, this being the budget year and the second year of the binding being the bonding year, that if we do pass a bonding bill in, in this year, it should be very limited to um, both necessary uh, infrastructure projects that that are absolutely essential and necessary to do this year, um, and also uh, the the second or third phase of multi-phase projects that need to be uh, approved to keep those projects moving along. And that's been the tradition of the House of Representatives and the the Senate um, in uh, non-bonding years. So I I would look for that same policy to continue. Well, Mr. Leader, just a quick follow-up, if I may. If, in fact, the the budget situation permits some size bonding bill, and if it looks like you're moving ahead with it, if, is it is it contingent again upon the, the governor's emergency powers being dialed back to, to what you feel is a more reasonable level? You know, the, the two issues are separate for us. We're not going to say that one is contingent on the other. We do believe very strongly that the governor should work with the legislature. I think most Minnesotans agree with that. Uh, we hope we can achieve that in this session. Um, we do now have appropriation authority. Uh, when the legislature is in session, the governor cannot do the spending of federal dollars that he's been able to do without legislative approval. So um, we do. We now have regained our appropriation authority, um, which will kind of automatically get us more involved in the process. But um, I'd like to see us uh, really restore to that co-equal branch of government that I think the, the Constitution envisioned and I think Minnesotans expect. Um, next is uh, Jesse Van Burkle. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Minority Leader. Uh, the House Speaker talked a little bit ago about how she opposes ending emergency powers, but it's open to some changes to executive orders, like making it easier for landlords to evict problem tenants. Um, I'm curious about what other changes to Wall's orders are being discussed. Well, you know, I think uh, we'd like to see them end and and we'd like to see the legislature create a new framework that would allow the governor to respond to COVID in the way that that we would kind of envision. And that means kind of, you know, making sure that we can access the federal dollars that have been appropriated and making sure that um, he can distribute the, the, the vaccine in the necessary way. Uh, but other decisions uh, like closures and, and those sorts of things, the legislature is in session now um, and we can weigh in. And, and re- the, the real problem here isn't that we haven't been able to weigh in. It's that Minnesotans can't be heard when the governor is is uh, using his executive authority. It's impossible for a member of the public to reach out to the governor's office and have any meaningful input or conversation. That's why we have um, a House of Representatives and members who who represent a far fewer number of Minnesotans. It allows us to have a, 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 a much closer relationship, um, and, and we think that's super important. So um, that's going to be our priority. Peter Callahan. Right. Uh, with that, well, we've got to get, Kurt, we've got to get you over we're, to the floor. We're out of time. I apologize, everybody. Thanks for the <laughs> questions. Thanks for your work. We look forward to working with you this session. Um, unfortunately, session starts in 15 minutes and I've got to run over to the Capitol. So uh, thanks again, and we'll look forward to seeing you all uh, uh, in the near future. Thanks.